Oh, good morning. Donnie Walker here. Oh, what day is it? Thursday. What's the date? I don't know. Sometimes I lose track of the days and numbers, eh? So, uh, haven't been on doing a lot of videos lately. A few here and there, but uh, I just want to say thanks to everyone out there in YouTube land and the world and the city here for supporting me. I got 10,000 subscribers now. Yay. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you've all been enjoying my videos. I'm going to do uh, quite a few more coming up here. I keep saying that. But I've just been super busy and I'm in the midst of possibly moving home too. Um, like I told you before, I've never have a workshop at home and it really irritates me and it's very depressing. You just can't step out at night and work on a project and just go in and have, have a cup of tea and go to bed, right? Or some popcorn. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, me and Shelly uh, possibly be, might have found a house. We will know tonight if we we're going to take it or not. It's a little bit away from the shop, but it's only a 25-minute drive into uh, to the new shop where I put my saws together after I come here and port them and, and do my belts, right? So yeah, anyways, looking forward to that. And it's also got a spot to uh, park our RV, which is cool. And yeah, just a big, nice workshop in the basement, a big garage. So um I'll be able to do some uh, more projects and actually show, show you guys a, a lot more stuff running some saws and whatnot. I had some Husqvarna guys yesterday here. One fellow from the factory. Uh, my salesman from, from the island here, uh, region, regional salesman, uh, re, uh, Western Canadian manager. So it was nice to see them and have a nice talk to them about some Husqvarna issues. Um, and maybe some stuff that might be coming up in the future. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm, he's the one fellow from Sweden was really nice. I'm going to be uh, in contact a little bit more with uh, the production manager, some of the big saws, to um, get a little help with some of the situations we're having here on the West Coast with the new big auto-tune saws and some of the, the small ones too. They also showed us a new uh, T540, um, Mark III it's called now. Um, it's not quite available yet, but very soon. We might have a demo at our shop just to let a few of our uh, good customers in the area try it out and see how they like it against the still 201T, which we know is uh, pretty much the most favorite out there. So we'll see how that goes. I hope it's a better version. Their first version was good, had good power, but had lots of little uh, little issues with it. Won't get into that. I've also had a lot of discussion on 394s, uh, hot starting. Um, I know I've had that same situation when, when we ran a lot of 394s here in the bush. Uh, great saw, they um, were here for quite a, quite a long time. I don't know what the years were, but they were a great size. They were smooth, they had good power, they were reliable, great size. But we did have some, after a while, would be hard to start when they are hot after you shut them off. For a long time, I thought it was coils. I would change coils, put carb kits in them. Oh man, I think we'd do it again. Me and my dad finally had kind of figured out, you know, most uh, carburetors have a uh, built-in seat to the carburetor, eh? Where the main needle goes in for your f fuel control. Like old Tillotsons and most wall rolls and Zamas, the seat does not, it's not re removable or replaceable. Either of these ones on the 394 carburetor. So this is a WJ39. Um, basically these, yeah, these are all WJ39s. I just want to show you something here that I've I've kind of explained to people, and this is how I made some of them work work a lot better on the uh, hot restart. So on, on a carburetor, you know, I've gone through these before. Most of you guys, if you're watching this, you kind of know how a carburetor works. You know, pulsation, which is an internal one on this one. So the pulsation out of the crankcase operates your fuel pump side, which in turn delivers the fuel to the metering side. 
when the throttle is cracked open a little bit or on a choke choke mode it wants to pull all the fuel through all your diffuser holes here through your low speed circuitry and high speed circuitry but mainly on the low for startup okay your first first little low speed hole here like your idle hole here and with your throttle plate just slightly open with the fast idle with the choke on right and once it fires you take the choke off you pull it again onto a fast idle let it warm up a little bit click the fast idle off with the th throttle and then let it idle and warm up a bit then you do your cutting problem was when guys were shutting them off they weren't restarting when they're hot so what what me and my dad found is we started really looking at these carburetors and if you if you i got four of them right here right now it's going to be a little hard for you to see but i'm going to explain to it i don't want to move the camera and get it all jiggly around you take a brand new needle and they have the large needle which is the same in a Tilson and a, a Walrol and Zama they all use the same needle so what you do is you take take your car bodies of the 394 take take a new one first if you have one most people don't they see a lot are available but what you do put the needle into the hole where it goes in where your metering lever where your metering needle goes okay your main needle set in there and look at the distance as it sits down in there you can see that right there is where i'm talking about where that needle sits down and you can see uh, the top of the needle how it how it sits down in that chamber now that one's sitting down quite a ways okay so why I'm saying that, that one sits down quite a ways, is because that seat on these carburetors actually move. This is the carburetor that, that actually has a seat in there. You can't take it out and replace it, but vibration of this saw would make that seat move that way. Just the pounding of the, that needle moving up and down all that time made it move. Maybe it was the way the needle, but I contributed to vibration too. So if you have that hot starting problem, check your carburetor like this. If it sits way down in there, it's going to take a lot more force and vacuum to pull that metering diaphragm down to lift that needle to give you gas. Okay. So here, that one sits down, I don't know, in measurements. It's definitely down maybe like a 16th. Okay. So we'll put it in this carburetor. This one's sitting down about the same yeah they're they're both kind of bad and this one third one this one sits a little higher but but still sitting down a bit okay i'll go to our fourth one i think i had these in order you know me not too organized yeah that one sits almost level okay so that's the better one so in case, instead of having to buy a new carburetor, I come up with a trick that actually worked on most of them. Unless they were super bad and it didn't, didn't help it. It helped it a little bit, but not, not greatly. So I'm going to show you that in a second, but I'll show you what, what Husqvarna did with the 395 um, and later 394s on some of the carburetors. They came out with a small needle. Okay, the small little needle you see in newer carburetors and Zamas. And some wall rolls. Little tiny one versus your big one. So think about that. That's a lot less weight of it pounding on the seat. Um, and just made made the carburetors work better. And it still does in the 395s. So if you notice this one, it sits like above the chamber there, just, just around there. So they've calibrated it just right. Okay, so the fix I did, or modification to make this work better, is I take the Walsh plug out, the low speed Welsh plug. And what you can do, you just sharpen up a little tuning screwdriver into a point with a little flat on it. And you poke that into that, into the Welsh plug and pry it out. I'm gonna show you how to do one right now tools right here so we're going to take this 
they call an awl, or you can use a tuning screwdriver, sharpen it up. Take that thing, push it in that welt plug, and boop, see? Pries right out, right? And obviously you get a new one in your carb kit and put it back in. Some guys you used to use uh, nail polish to try to seal those welch plugs. Don't. That, well, that nail polish comes off and gets into your jets and clogs it, clogs it. Just simply put them in properly and hopefully they'll seal okay. I used to use that stuff too, but I, I did have problems with it. Okay, so once you get that plug out of there, you know, notice your hole closest to the, to your car your motor side where your idle is okay there's the pulse hole underneath and then there's your little idle hole on the bottom of the low speed circuitry so this little diffuser jet for the idle hole is the first one that is against the body it's kind of right in the side okay i take a, a drill bit that is one size bigger out of my jet jet drill index uh set that i have and i drill that idle hole circuit one size bigger okay don't go any bigger one size then i take the fuel pump side off and i will drill the pulse hole here right into the carburetor where it goes into the chamber where it pumps that one size bigger that i found give it more vacuum or pulse to actually pull that metering diaphragm down and move that needle open. You still also need to, you know, make sure you have your, your metering lever set at the right calibration. Um, you know, like setting a float on a car carburetor, right? So that's what I would do. Drill that idle circuit hole, one size bigger. The pulse hole, one size bigger. And hopefully that'll help your 394 carburetor start better when it's hot. Yes, there's been ignition coils to go bad. And they use the most ignition coils on saws. Think about that. You know, how many guys out there have changed them? Usually they're just right dead. Or sometimes when they're hot, they won't refire. You know, sure, some of the ones on the 394 and even the 395 have had issues, but not that many. So that there, there you go. Why don't you guys were commenting on, on about that? I seen on a bit of a forum. But that's what we did, and it worked most of the time not not 100 percent, but i'm just i'm just explaining that and then you also want to make sure that you've done other stuff Pr pressure vac your engine make sure your fuel lines are good obviously remember this is the lung of the engine the carburetor so make sure that thing's working right it has the proper fuel supply to it proper venting in your gas tank and there's another thing someone was just mentioned the other day they're having Problems with 395, just quitting on them and, and it would fire up later. Tank tank uh, cap vent, okay? You can buy the tank caps. Uh, I believe the number is 503-0783. No, that's a cap. Um, I'll get you the gas cap, vented gas cap part number. I used to just put them on all saw, especially here on that mushy wood on this rainy coast here. All that fine fur dust would get in the tank vent and clog it. You've got to run the saw 15, 20 minutes, bleh, die. Especially more on a tank, a full tank of fuel, or on a halfway, it would take a little longer. So an instant quick fix was just to put a vented cap on it, just like the old 2100 had on their oil their oil cap. It's basically the same cap as the 2100 had, was, which was vented on their oil oil system. Even you could put a vented cap on the oil oil cap, on a vented cap on for your oil cap, on old 372s and 394s and sometimes it helps them oil better because the vents get a little clogged up there as well so there you go i just wanted to say thanks for everyone for the for all the subscribers and uh, there'll be a lot more coming your way um starting to build that that hot saw the 592 got this beautiful pipe from cpi racing Ch check out um rocky mountain saws they got a lot of different pipes for different models. So that's a quick, if you're building, want to build a race saw or just want something fun for yourself, phone these guys up or email them and get, get a pipe. They're uh, very honored that they sent me this one to test and try. And I just talked to my Husqvarna salesman yesterday and they're going to sponsor me a brand new 592, uh, which I'll put it on. But I also will 
how my other one that I built kind of out of the three crashed ones to just get it all R&D'd up and get ready. Then I'll take the new one apart and get it happening. I'm going to really try to, to work the auto tune with this pipe. See how it works. If it, it'll actually accept it and work properly, it'll map itself to this pipe. Or I'm going to put the uh, 585 carburetor on it um, or a different type of carburetor that is adjustable, not auto-tuned, with a different ignition system. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep you informed on that. But yeah, there you go about the 394 hot starting. You know, now these new little saws with auto-tune and Mtronic, we get some hot starting as well. But a lot of times it's because they're sucking air. I know uh, we had a great discussion about some of the new Husky auto-tunes yesterday. Um, they've been terrible, you know, so if you guys got any that are hard starting when they're hot, they don't idle, you need to air vacuum test them, compression check them, and then download them and check out your errors, you know, check out your errors first on your uh, CST or your uh, new uh, your service tool at Husky, and then do your procedures, compression test, air vacuum check, then a visual look, checking your wires are impaired to interrupt this, uh, the auto tune or the Amtronic if you're dealing with Amtronic. So there you go. Hey, keep your saw in the wood, stick in the ice, rub it in the road. Check out the walkersawshop.com online store. Donnie's got to get at her. Lots of work to do. Get you guys all happening and got the card engine together for my buddy that blew one up last weekend. Got mine back together. I rebuilt it with a new short block. Well, I didn't. He had scooped it. Scoob did most of the work. Thank you very much, buddy. Love you, buddy. He'll, and I actually get to race with him. Scoob is my, my, my good buddy, Justin Lostrom, which I uh, um, taught him kind of how to drive, race carts, work on motors. Uh, I never raced with him. I, he used to race my carts and I'm on my team. But now I'm actually going to be able to race with him next week. And it's quite exciting for us both. And we're going to have a good time. Maybe I get some footage of that. See how it goes. Anyways, keep your side of it. Have a great day. Love y'all.